just let's stand in our X position that we started in and just really stretch out in this white X. You can turn the legs out a little bit if you want to, but it's not like a big ballet. And just really try and reach out in all five directions, up through the head, out through the fingertips, and then down through the feet. So you're just kind of feeling, and just trying to pay attention to all five limbs, right? Your head is the fifth limb. So trying to pay attention to that. And then just take a side and then take, let your knees bend as you swing forward and around. And then just take a couple of times and then go the other way and just let your body swing around in a circle and just keep reaching out and do kind of what feels good. So we're not trying to do anything specific other than just kind of get the body generating some heat. But, and then let's take reaching out through the fingertips, take a twist around and uh, just feeling the feet planted on the ground, take a nice twist. And this is also just a check in with your own body and just notice, oh, that knee feels this way and my back feels this way. Good. Um, and then let's just shake out the hands a little bit shake out the hands and then shake out the foot and shake it out. Yeah, just get a little bit of blood moving there. I'm not sure what you guys were doing right before this. So just get the body uh, a little bit loose. Good. All right, so let's start with our, our alignment exercise. We're not at the bar yet, but we're just gonna try and find that gentle um, way of finding the releve, which is really placing our weight over the front of the um, front of the foot and start by lifting the heels just a tiny, tiny bit off the floor uh, so that you're just floating on the ball of the foot and then place the heel down and keep your weight forward. And as you place the heel down, try and feel a length through the back of the leg and a stretch upwards through the head. So we're always thinking of lengthening is strengthening and then play with that a little bit and just see if you can let yourself just float up a little bit more each time and see if it can just easily carry you up and down our body wants to be efficient it doesn't want to work hard <laughs> right i think we know this um so one of the things that we can really start to understand through ballet practice is this efficiency that we can build in the body. All right, so then swing the arms a little bit. Just let the arms swing. Because remember with Porte bras, with the arms, it really is just a suspended swing. So then we'll just catch it into our, and catch. That's nice, Fran, good. And then we just catch it into that middle, fifth position. Again, I'm going more for quality than like the perfect ballet position. Maybe try and catch it all the way up if you want. <laughs> and then just see how long you can kind of hold it in that feeling of a suspension. And notice how also that can also maybe pull you up onto your releve. Can it? <laughs> Letting you, yes, beautiful. Yeah. Good. So that's kind of the efficiency that I'm talking about, where uh, we feel these natural swings and places in our body that our body works the best. And that's what our efficiency is about. And that's beautiful, Fran. Very nice. Yes, excellent alignment. So we're going to kind of start in this position by holding that suspension and then try and stay with it. Rise and lower three times to and then the third one, we're going to stay up there, gently swing the arms up, open, and then reach forward to lower. Rotate to first, and then we do the same thing in first. And remember, it's just a rotation from the hips, and that's where your turnout is, reaching forward to float down. Yeah. So I do rock back onto my heels to get into that first position. Um, I put some weight into the heels. I pick up the toes, swing them out, but then I make sure that I'm pushed forward again once I hit that first position. Okay. So we'll do that back and forward. 
Um, this is also a calf and ankle strengthener, but it's also about our alignment. Okay, here we go. Getting my music going. Here we go. From parallel, keeping your weight forward and a gentle toss into our middle fifth. Float, float. And you don't have to go all the way up. It's just about finding that balance. Reach forward to help control your descent. And first position. also kind of an injury prevention thing. Um, a lot, there's been some recent research about doing those calf raises, those leg raises um, helps prevent any ankle problems. So that's kind of why I start with it too, is also just to make sure we're getting strong as we build our technique. All right, let's go right into plies at the bar. Oh, there's Beth. Uh, so plie, so, uh, Let's just talk a little bit about tracking the joints. So if you've ever done any running or any physical therapy, sometimes the physical therapist will be like, you know, just do a little knee bend and they'll watch to see if you're going like this or like this or. So when we do our plie, we wanna make sure we're tracking. So the middle of the knee needs to go over the middle of the foot. And just, and then, so find that in parallel first and then do the same thing where you rotate in that first position and then the knees over the toes. Now this is where we can start to start to go a little bit wonky, uh, like something like this or like this. So <laughs> we wanna try and just, so that's why I want you to compare it between your parallel and your first. You should feel a torque in your thigh to keep it from rolling, right? And that's the tracking that I'm talking about in the rotation because what we don't want to do is land a jump and be like that, right? We want to land a jump and be right over the, right over the foot. Um, so that's the first thing to think about in that plie. Now in ballet, uh, we don't do a squat, right? So sometimes you'll do these and some sort of exercise a squat that way. So in ballet, we don't really do it a squat so much as the plie stays up and down. So the shoulders over the hips, over the knee, over the ankle, over the toe. So as you're doing that plie, we don't want to let this happen. It might feel a little restricted, right? You might feel like you want to go farther by letting this happen, but, but it's not needed in ballet. We don't need to do that, okay? And we're going to learn the ground plie later, which is a when you do go all the way down, but I want to build us in the demi plie first. So the demi plie and the heels stay on the ground. Okay, so then we're gonna add our arms. So let's talk about this arm position. The arms, when they're to the side, they're slightly in front of your body. So you're not gonna go to the side here and the arm isn't gonna be behind you. And I like to think of it as when your arms are to the side that you're hugging a big giant tree. That's nice, everyone. And again, that keeps our weight forward, doesn't it? If we're kind of reaching around and, and slightly in front. And uh, really beautiful, Freya, that's beautiful alignment. So as you're finding that position, it's connected to the alignment. So we let the arms swing in that direction. And this is called a demi-second, right? Halfway to second. Second is all the way up opposite the shoulder joint, right? And this is going halfway. When we're doing the demi-second, let your hands be fluid. 
right? Just let the hands kind of lead that gesture. Beautiful. Yeah. And then, yeah, let me take it up here. So we take the demi here and straighten. And then the press up is that same tossing we were just doing in the previous thing. And let everything control your descent down. Demi, straighten, releve, and then redirect the arm to the side. So find that swinging action to the side. So do this swing again. And obviously our arm is gonna drop back down again. So now try that swing. When you get to the top of the swing, throw it out to the side instead. So that's what I mean by redirecting it. And uh, so it's not so much that we're trying to hold in the shoulder joint and like grip, but we're just taking that swing and then putting it, pushing that energy somewhere else. Okay, so it goes like this. We put those things together. Demi plie, straighten, toss and flip, and control your descent. Toss and demi plie, up, and then open and redirect. Now we take our forward stretch. As you go forward, I want you to think about hinging from the hips. Take a flat back as far as you can, and then when you can't anymore, let your back go round. Again, this is a swing all the way to the back, as far as you want to go. When you're doing a back bend in ballet, we don't want to let the knees go or the hips. The back bend actually starts the top of your rib cage. So you find this shape here. The shoulders are down, right? And the rib cage is coming down. We don't let the rib cage pop yet. But think about opening your rib cage. So you let your rib cage open and your shoulders are kind of pinched. And then you lengthen up through the spine and close the rib cage. Yeah, so it's an isolated movement of the rib cage. From the rib cage all the way down, stay straight. So it's really a reaching into the back space and then lengthening again to recover and close the rib cage. Nice, Lori. The other thing, make sure you turn your head whenever you do a back bend. So that way you're not hurting your neck. And it really is just the rib cage moving. So if you can see, I'm holding the shape, this whole shape, I'm just holding that. And I move the rib cage. And then I lengthen in the spine to pick it up. So now try that from that forward stretch. So you go forward, tabletop, round down, the arm goes over the head, and then lead with the fingers, open the rib cage, close the rib cage. Beautiful, don't forget to turn your head. Tondu to the side, start to move to the side, and then find your second position, bring the arm down. Then we do the same thing in second, demi, toss and releve, float down, demi, toss and releve, redirect, side stretches. Now with the side stretch, the rib cage is moving sideways. Again, I'm holding the shape. I'm not letting this happen, but I find the shape and then the rib cage takes me over. Okay, good. Nice, everyone. Then we'll take another tondu, close back to first position. Then we repeat the whole thing. So we get a, a second chance on it. Okay, here we go. No rest for the weary. First position, remember you're gonna start with your left hand on the bar or counter or wherever you are. And you'll be having your right foot to the outside. Here we go. Here's our music. First position. Stretch. 
bring the arms together. this low fifth, middle fifth, high fifth. And then when you turn the hands out from there, that is uh, a lingerie. Did someone have a question? Oh, good. Good. And then, yeah, so turn the hands out from the a lingerie, right? Do you remember that from last week? That's right. They go in all different directions. All right, let's do the second side. Beautiful. Here we go. Right hand on the bar with our left arm, on, uh, left leg on the outside, which is my blue one. <laughs> So really trying to connect right away what's happening underneath to what's happening up over top. Um, and then that's really how the dancing happens, is connecting those things together. All right, let's work on our feet. So back to the bar or facing into the bar, whatever works for you. Um, let's start in parallel. And remember our tracking again here is really important. Uh, foot exercise. And this is to help build our strength and our dexterity in the foot for ballet. And it's like a peeling off the floor. 
a little tiny push up for your big toe joint. Push down through that big toe joint a little bit, everyone, when you find the stemmy point. Careful that, just notice if you start to roll like somewhere else on your foot and try and really just anchor through that big toe joint because that's really the, the strength of the foot is through that part of your metatarsal. So we're just trying to feel that tracking. Okay, so remember the exercises, we do foot exercise first, each foot. And then we do the same action with the foot, demi, point, demi, back to parallel, demi, point, demi, back to parallel, okay? I'd like us to go right away into the other positions. So we'll do parallel and then go out to first position, foot exercise, foot exercise. I want us to go to the side to second first because it's similar to parallel in the fact that it goes straight out from the position. And then we'll go to the front and then, um, actually, I might stop the music. No, we'll go to the front and then we'll go to the back. We might have to just turn around and face our bars to go to the back. Um, so I'll, I'll stop the music when we go to the back. That way we can just reorient in case you're kicking something. All right, here we go. So remember to be mindful of the tracking of the joints, as well as that feeling of pushing against the floor with the foot. And that's me stalling because I can't find, where's the track? Oh, there it is. Here we go. From parallel. Lift the heel, big toe, back to demi, parallel. Demi, point, demi, parallel. Demi, point, and demi. We're trying to find this beautiful reach as well through the joints with a reaching action. First position. Lift, point. talk about this tendu to the back. So when you're facing the bar, um, you can easily go to the back. That way you're not kicking anything. And remember, it's an opening of the joint here. So that way this heel doesn't flip forward. And again, talking about energy, the way that things swing. Obviously, when we're going to the back, it's going to want to push your body like this, right? And but what we want to remember is that we can redirect that energy somewhere else. So instead of having this force push us forward, I'm going to take it and I'm going to push my back up. So I have to do something with that energy that's going that way, right? It has to compensate somewhere in my body. So instead, I take that energy and I push it up through my head like a big fountain when I do that Tom do to the back. And then I'm getting super strong, beautiful friend. Um, I'm getting super strong in that standing leg when I go to the back. We tend not to do this a lot in life. So we don't kind of walk around so much. Maybe we do, I don't know. Um, but uh, so that's why this tongue to the back is a little bit more complicated idea, 
great. All right, do we have it enough to try it? Let's just do a bunch to the back, foot exercise, foot exercise, and then go to the back. Okay, here we go. Facing your bar. Are the toes in uh, oh, the demi first? What was, sorry, what was the question? I didn't get the, I didn't get in fast enough. Oh. The toes in semi first and then points uh, semi back or point all the time. Um, Going backwards. We're doing the same pattern, but we're just doing we're just going to the back now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, but but got it. Okay, thank. You. Yeah, and it's demi, not semi, but it does mean half. But it's with a D, D E M I. But it means half, like semi does. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Facing your bar. Foot exercise. So demi, full point, demi, back to first, other leg. Demi, full point, demi. But now we go to the demi point, full point to the back, and back to first, stretching to the back, straight knee point, and demi, back to first. Foot exercise. So this is just going up and through the first position. And then going to the back, so straight back to a long view. Full point, down at first. Down, full point, that's it. Let's take another round, everyone. Foot exercise, down. trickier trickier feeling but the more we kind of explore different parts of it it'll start to make more sense all right now we have to go on to degage so remember everything's built off of a tondu tondu is our basic move of ballet everything goes starts with a tondu and finishes with tondu so we have to come back to the ground right so the tondu is on the ground so the degage move means that we're taking that same action of the tondu but then it comes off the ground Find the floor with the tip of the toe and back to first. So the last thing to leave the floor is your toe. And the first thing to find it again is your toe. So that's what this exercise helps us to understand. So we go to the front three times with the right leg. Brush, touch, close. Brush, touch, close. Brush, touch, close. Two rises. And front, touch, close. And front. Touch back to first, brush, touch, close, two, rises, no plie. And then to the side for three. And then um, and then we'll redirect and then we'll go to the back and side again. Okay. Um, questions about that one. Here we go. Here's our music. Run first. Rush, touch, close. Rush, touch, close. Rush, touch, close. Up, down, up, down. Other leg. Good. Excellent. Very nice, John. To the side. Excellent, everyone. Beautiful swinging. Good. Nice, Carol. Good. Nice, Lori. Good, let's take it to the front again. Good. So now we'll go to the back. 
So back inside. So same idea. Back inside. All right. Start to the back with the right. So you're going to face your bar in first position. And then just brush straight out to the back. Fantastic. Here we go. That's not my music. This is my music. Here we go. Brushing straight out to the back. Brush, touch, close. Brush, touch, close. Good. These look beautiful. Very nice, Lori. Good. Go to the side again. Good. Lovely swinging, everyone. I love it. Good. Side, side, you guys are doing great. Take it again to the back with your right leg three times. But beautiful reach of the toes there. Up, up. Excellent, Fran. It's beautiful. Yes. Nice job. Excellent reach. Good. And then one more set to the side. Good. So great. Up, up. Fantastic. Look at how great you guys are doing on your second day. Oh my gosh, that was so good. Um, so the more you practice your tendus and degages, this is something you will always do in every ballet class is a tendu exercise and a degage exercise. And what you want to, which you guys are already starting to feel is that beautiful reach of the tip of the toe, right? And you feel that suspension. And the more you do it, you'll be able to reach even more, the more you practice it. So that was really great. Okay, we got to learn a new exercise now because we've done all the ones from last week. Ron de Jambe. Um, so <laughs> my boyfriend, when he's listening to me teach belly class, he's like, who's Ron Dijam and who's Sue Tanu? So anyway, um, <laughs> I want to meet these people. So Ron means round, Dijam means leg. So we're moving our leg around in a circle. So we take these places. So we've just learned to the front, to the side, to the back. And then we can connect those through the rond de jam. So we're gonna build it um, with doing half of the rond de jam in each direction. The other part of our rond de jam technique is understanding the circular pattern of outward. So pretend that you're swimming for a moment and just notice this direction is an outward direction. So you're pushing out and around your body. So it's like, that's the outward circle. And we say on deor in ballet for outward circle. Now the other circle is an inward circle, kind of like you're going to give somebody a hug or something, an inward circle. I also like to think if you want a poker game, you would say these are all my poker chips, right? That kind of gathering into yourself. <laughs> uh, so that's it. On to don, inward. That's all we have in ballet. We have outward circles and we have inward circles. So that's what we're going to learn right now are those directions. So again, back to the bar from first position. You taunt you to the front, and then you go to the side from there and then close. We do that four times. Front, side, close. And as you're doing this, you can get this lovely, almost like you're painting with your foot quality. Then take the other side. Front, side, close, front, side, close. This is an outward circle. And then we're gonna do the inward circle. Side, front, close. Side, front, close for four. And then side, front. Okay, that's the inward circle, inward direction. Then I'd like us to go for it off the ground, on the air, in the air. So we'll do the same thing, but this time we're gonna go off the ground. Now, how do you know how high to take your leg? So the 45 degree height where we did our degage was, is you guys were kind of already kind of figuring out that spot. But it's basically the way they used to mark it is wherever your ankle bone is on your standing leg, you want to take your foot opposite that. And that's called the 45 degree height of the leg. And then from there, you have like a 60 degree and then you have your 90, which is supposed to be straight out, like a straight out from your body. 
So this is the 45 degree height. Nice, nice, Sarah, good. Now, I want you to just notice something. So do your tondu to the front. Uh, so it's a tear. So tondu, when I say tondu, I usually mean it's on the ground. So keep your foot on the ground. Take your rond de jambe to the side and just notice that plane, right? The floor is a plane, it's a straight, it's the same, it's geometry. Now, when you take the leg off the ground, I want you to try and remember that so that the leg doesn't dip as you go to the side. So from front to side, you still have that same imaginary plane, but your leg is off, that's nice, Bram, yes. Okay, so that's really important when we start to build this technique in the Rana Jam off the ground, that we imagine that floor plane just coming up and we're still on that plane. Does that make sense? Okay, here we go. <laughs> Let me make sure this is the right one. Is that the one I wanted to do today? Oh wait, I think I wanted to do a different one. Um, that's the faster music for it. So the pattern goes front, side, and close. Okay, here we go. Let's do it together. From first. Standing nice and tall. On your front. Front, side, close. Front, side, close. Two more. Front, side, close. And front, side. So when you're in the rond de jambe and you're coming back down, do you t your toe touches first and then you bring your heel in? Yes, just like a degage, but it's this is a slower tempo. But that's always true from now on forever. I don't, I can't think of a time when you wouldn't do that in ballet class. Very good. Yeah. So it's just like the degage. Um, you find the floor and then close. But a lot of times, what we're doing is we're kind of going right through it, right? Which I thanks for. Um, noticing that. In the degage exercise, I'm stopping here. So we feel that and then close, but here we would just go right through it. Yeah, and, smooth, and kind of smooth out that transition. Yes, 
Lovely. Beautiful. Yeah, everyone. Good. And John, beautiful job keeping the knees really straight as you like progress through those positions. Um, Ranajam tends to kind of challenge that, keeping the leg straight as you keep moving it. Let's reverse it. So now, uh, so face your bar. So we're going to go back side. So we're actually going to start with the inward circle. So you tondu to the back. Now, as you bring it around to the side, what's going to happen is your leg's going to come, that's right, Fran, the leg's going to come a little bit far. It's going to be a farther journey because your second is actually not straight out to the side. It's a little bit in front of your body. So when we do this reverse, the leg is traveling a little bit of a farther distance than it did from the front to the side and the side to the front. So practice going both directions, outward and inward, just to kind of feel that. So we have the back to the side and close. That's right, nice, Lori. And then we have side around to the back and close. Good. Yeah, good. So when we're reversing this whole idea, which is the thing we say a lot in dance classes, reverse it. What does that mean? Do everything backwards? I don't know. Um, so it means that we're going to go back side for four and then side back for four. And then we're going to also take it off with it. Try it off the ground once before we do it with the music. Um, so lift it into that back and then to the side. That's nice, Lori. Very good. And this is going to challenge that rotation if you're going off the ground now from the back to the side and the side to the front. That's it. Good. This one is harder, right? Going from the back to the side. This one requires um just the different muscle groups and sets and stuff so um uh it'll be uh something that we just keep working on including me i'm still working on it okay here we go i'll talk you through it first position back side tondu to the back first and back side together. The reason why I teach it this way is because this point where your second is, is really important for you to know where that is. 
whether you're going here or here so that you know how to maneuver your rotation correctly for the whole circle. Can you review that? Um, yes. Um, did you say you're not going around as far or you're going around farther to second position and one of the other? Okay, so if your second position is not perfectly flat out 180 from your body, which right. not, nobody is, your, your second position is slightly in front, you see? Okay. So if I go front side, that's less of a journey than I go back side. Okay. So it's so, a little bit farther from your back to the side and side to back because of the fact that your leg is slightly in front of your body. Okay, That's so it's okay. So I'm going around at 85 degrees or so, and then here I'm going 95 yeah. degrees. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. If we had a protractor, yes. <laughs> and if we were in the Renaissance, yes. <laughs> if, and if we're engineers, yes. And if you're an engineer like you, then yes. Exactly. And it's built off of those exact ideas. I mean, when people had this 90 degree angle, this was our, it had to be a T, it had to be a perfect T, right? That was the whole point of dancing back then. Um, so that's where these terms come from. But we have to remember that we're humans, actually. So, um, yeah. So we apply these ideas, but then we have to, you know, realize that we have a a, a body that's maybe not a protractor. Okay, um, <laughs> we're now going to go off the bar now. But thank you for bringing that up, John, because that really is the basis of of the technique and the ideas behind it. Really is okay. Um, good. But then the romantics came in and changed everything, right? So uh, okay, let's do port de bras, everybody. Carriage of the arm. So the port bras I'd like us to do today is our first port bras. So um, everyone just move your fingers around. And one of the things that I find really interesting about ballet is that we use our fine motor skills of our fingertips, just like if you're doing really beautiful needlework or playing an instrument. Um, our fingertips have a whole dancing quality to them. Now, we might not see those from the stage, like we might not see the detail of the index finger, but back in the Renaissance, you would because you were dancing in close proximity. So your hand shape was very, very important. So when we're doing ballet, we have to be careful that we're, we don't have this kind of claw at the, end of the, at the end of the arm, that it has an expression and its own little dance happening out here in the fingertips and the hands. So one of the things I like to think about is um, the energy in the palm of the hand. Like pretend you have a soft, furry little creature that's living there and you have to not crush it, <laughs> right? So there's this gentleness and this open energy in the palm of the hand. And then we talked about the handshake last time of like making sure all fingers are apart. Thumb on the inside, everyone. Make sure that thumb stays on the inside of the palm of the hand. If you want to, you could, you know, do this middle finger to thumb shape to try and train your hand. I do find that's a little confining, um, but if you can kind of reach those two together, maybe think you're like holding something in between there. Good. The other thing about the hand shape, careful that the energy doesn't come out the wrist. I don't know if you can see that, but the energy has to come out the edge of the finger. Edge of the fingers is the end of your, end of your arm. Sometimes I see dancers when they're trying to get this round shape then all of a sudden this this wrist starts to poke out but it just you need to elongate through that shape. But so when we have the arms down we want to have that nice frame of the fingers and then again that quality of tossing and then giving. Take the elbows up let the hands follow that and then float down. So the first port de bras is a generous offering out into the world and then a floating down again. And this connects to our alignment. Really important once we start moving, this, this first port de bras propels you into space. So to try and feel that reach out. Okay, so it's not, this is not, in my view, first port de bras. Do you see the difference? So the difference is I'm giving. 
I'm bleeding. Yes, beautiful. And then it has a meaning behind it, right? And just try the two different ways. Try leading with this idea of giving and try leading with just, and just notice how it feels really different in your body. So that reaching pulls us up, right? Gives us power. Okay, so we do that four times. Um, turn your head towards the right. Turn your head towards the left. Turn your head towards the right. And turn your head towards the left as you open. Then we're gonna try it with a tonie. So this means we're gonna tondu plie in second as you open. And then we're gonna take a slight apolon, which means this arm is gonna go down, this one's gonna go up, and we're gonna push the shoulder forward and close. Tondu, plie as you open. Whoa, I slipped there a little bit. And then as you transfer your weight, you point the other foot and then push the shoulder forward. Very nice and close. Uh, let's just do the feet really quick. Just place your hands on your hips so you can just concentrate on the feet. So you tondu, place your second position, plie. And then from there, you have to use your tondu with the other foot to push yourself onto the standing leg. Tondu, plie, push with the tondu. So try that a few times. And what I want you to notice is that the action of the tondu, the action of pointing your foot is moving you in space. And that's really the goal of how we work our feet in balance. It's not just to look pretty, but it's to actually take us somewhere. So notice that as I go into plie, I go through the ball of the foot into that second, and then I use the other tondu to push me onto the standing leg. So it has a function, right? It's actually, it's, a tr it's transferring my weight. Okay, now try it with the arms, okay? So we want to, again, we want to try and pay attention to all these body parts. Plie, push, and close. Very nice. Tondu, plie, push. Good. All right. Let's do that. That's the beginning of our port de bras today. Let me see if I can do that. Here we go. From first, first quarter. Vitruvian man who is not equal on both sides, but balanced, right? So we don't we don't have a heart in the middle. We have a heart on one side. So the idea of the apoma is reflecting the way that we balance our unevenness in ourself. So there's the shoulder forward. So the way I feel that because I'm going through, so I'm pretty much straight here. But then as I point, I feel this twist around. That's it. And it comes from this position. Elongate, push the shoulder forward. 
So I'm not here. And this is where the geometry and the protractor come in again. Yeah, that's it, Sarah. Okay, let's do our waltz to finish with uh, waltzing. Step to the side, back and front. So, um, balance, uh, three beat step. So we do one, two, three, one. So just get the foot pattern and the weight change first. Don't worry too much about feeling like you have to know all the ballet about it. Side, back, front, side, back, front side and balance I means kind of to rock as well so you want to feel a nice calming rock in the body uh so you step to the side and technically you would go through the ball of the foot right onto a little bit of a plie and then you go up onto the ball of the foot and then fall down onto a plie so let's just practice that part up fall up fall up and play with your own timing. And just let yourself fall. And this is the fun part of waltzing. This is also what was scandalous about it. Try the other leg. Up, fall. Up, fall. Up, fall. Take different tempos. Have fun, feel the suspension, let yourself fall. And then just put a side in between. Side, up, fall, side, up, fall, side. And then just follow that movement around. Try not to second guess it, just play with it. And that's our waltzing balance. Um, I was thinking about this today. If we were doing a folk dance, you know, we might do something like, right something like this to be like really on time and like super quick and small but how I kind of gives us a little little bit of room to improvise so we can take this big step suspend and then fall and big step suspend right so that I like kind of opened things up a little bit took these like kind of codified folk dances and then what I call belayified them so let's just play with the music. We'll listen to the music. Um, so let's listen to the music and we'll hear the three beat in this music. It's not too fast, but let's listen to it first. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. You notice how he's sometimes stretches things out a little bit, but there's still that pulse underneath. So try it with me. Side, up, Side, bring the toe behind, and up. 